continuing part two. So that's what the Nephilims did. And when they had sexual relations with them, their seed, which was um, perversed with all these incubus, succubus spirits and everything else from them, caused them to, um, into generations and generations, have empty words. Witchcraft of, I can do this, I can do that. That's why it's the healing sometimes when you have a kingdom spouse, and when I say it's a covenant kingdom spouse, to bring someone possibly out of some type of sinful nature or to reprogram with understanding of the most high to heal their hearts, just like a family member. If you adopt children, children have been through foster care, and let's say you've adopted them and you're trying to teach them that their vessel is of Christ and you're trying to renew their spirit, rebirth and renew them, transform into light from darkness because they've been abused or something's happened to them. They've seen something sexual at a young age been traumatized so therefore you come in as a healer of yahuwah right and prophetically you cleanse them because you have the gift of your hands to to put your hands on their head maybe like this and say it's okay you're loved you're loved correctly you're loved with truth we honor your chasteness no one's gonna harm you anymore and you walk through that with them through these spiritual gifts of love okay so walk in the light, verse 8. For you were once darkness. You were all from darkness. Okay? Because the darkness is the sin that was inherited through witchcraft of perverseness from the devil, from Adam and Eve. And this this, this is a whole... I've given videos on this. I, I've, I've taught on this. And it's um, I don't want to get too off topic with that. But... This is what it's speaking about because it says, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is all is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. So this is this is about the tree of life and knowing good from evil, knowing being your eyes open to to the to um, good and good and bad. That's a tree. Which was the enemy. It had to do with sex, everyone. It had to do with sexual perversion and relations. Bringing in unclean foreign things. That's why we have to be careful that when we're healing another person, we're spiritually cleansing their spirit by what we speak that it's not an empty word of darkness but of light it encourages so that we don't go get pulled away and swept away into that set and sometimes a person you know someone that has um, been introduced to sexual sin at such a young age or perverseness or pornographic films, um, magazines, all those things that came out causes them to abruptly try to practice that in their own life. And so what happens is instead of seeing it as wrong, they see it as good and then they covet that unpure sin and that obscenity, you know, and so it becomes um, natural to them. You come in as a person and you try to heal through Christ, heal through touch, through love, through tenderness. Same thing as with a child that has been beaten and you're in front of them saying I'm not harming you when I move my hands it's I'm speaking with emphasis I'm putting feeling into my words because empty words have no feeling they're just spoken like cuss words idle words judge that will be judged but when your words aren't empty and they mean something they have context they have influity they they're 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 genuine they're authentic they're loving it's supportive even in discipline so you're telling that child I'm not going to hurt you I'm speaking to you and I want you to know that my hands have healing powerful gifts but of Christ they're not it's not my power it's his power that goes through me to help heal you okay and you want that child to feel comfortable because we all be have to become children 
to, excuse me, accept the love of Hamashiach, to accept the love that Holy Spirit is indwelling in us to purify our vessels, to kick out that sin, to kick out that perverseness, to kick out, you know? So, and when I say perverseness, I mean just straight Sodom and Gomorrah. We still forgive. There have been a lot, and this is why I talk about the sin, not the person, because when you're in the flesh, you talk about the person. When you're in this, when you're of the spirit, you talk about the sin, the behavior, the character, the way the Most High does. We're in His image. His character is not cussing. His character is not dirty. You see what I'm saying? His character and His image is to uphold righteousness. So we're to be that way. So. Homosexuality, bisexual, transgender, all of that, the they, the this, the them, and all that, we pray over their soul to release the demonic entity and the demonic possession and for their spirit to be cleansed through Yahusha. Christ crossing over from darkness into light through the door. That's, that's, you have to come out of the darkness, out of that dark hole into the light of Christ through his door to be cleansed. And it really does happen that way. And so it says, uh, verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, to Yahuwah, right? Through Yahusha. Okay? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So we still have to expose them. And when we expose them, it's even shameful, says, to talk about what they do in secret. Some of that secretness is equates to understanding the light and mysteries revealed in heaven. So you have to expose it. Now, when you're a prophet, it's even deeper where... And this is part of the spiritual gift of understanding tactfulness on how to, to describe it to where... I'm not in sin, but I'm describing to you because I have to humanly speak on the flesh and cast it out. And it, it becomes a very, I don't want to say the word tricky, but it becomes a very treacherous road to walk. That's why prophets, prophetic speaking, uh, chosen ones that, that do this have to, we're constantly repenting and saying sorry because we're not, we're like, ooh, what kind of had to say that satanic word to describe it. I had to say that, you know, it might be pedophilia we, or, or incest or something. We had to describe in a certain manner or we had to say certain words we didn't want to use. We're not cussing. We're not saying the specific word, but we're describing a woman's body part and not calling her a, a, a bad name, right? So it, it's just very intricate there. It's very authentic with understanding and you have to be someone who can love that's why the most high heals me quicker and quicker now it hurts to be in pain when you love so hard it is and it does it does when someone does not see that you have love for their spirit and they don't trust and you've given them trust you've given them honor it could be anyone and you've proven you're worthy to give that healing to them and to receive it. So finally here it says, verse 13, or 12 and 13, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, which is why now Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh. And that's why the Most High filters, or filters a prophetic speaking mouth. That's why it filters out. 
doesn't just spew out like Tourette's, like just spew out cuss words and, you know, think before we speak. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. It says, arise from the dead. You're dead, so you have to kill your flesh to arise and be given light through Christ. He takes a sword, puts it like this, and he, here, and he whoo, cleanses the garment. There's levels of understanding to this. There is a risen, your, your spirit arises and keeps arising in the kingdom. Walk in wisdom, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We redeem the time. The Most High gives us back that purpose, that calling again. He, he, he rejuvenates us. He redeems that time, even though he's out of time. He created any kind of time to come in or out. But the enemy used the clock. See that symbolism? Used the clock to control the masses, to control through this uh, beast system, through the matrix. Because matrix, tricking, matrix is the time. It's, it's, it's the clock going round and round. So it's basically a measuring rod. That's why he tries to be like the most high. He tries to, um, to measure time. But that rod is only the rod of the heavenly father. He cannot actually take that rod. He, he cannot take that rod and as a sickle and put it down in the sand and cause anything like that to happen. He has to do it all through witchcraft through his craftiness of what gift he was given when he was Lucifer. See, when he was at that time, time, right? I'm saying time again, at that time when he was given that. But when he was thrown down, when he was cast out of that part of the heavens, okay, because even says that, it even says in heavenly places that there's dark principalities in heavenly places. You, you go through you go through heavenly places where demons are of the air. You have to understand there's there's higher there's higher areas. That's why wizards and warlocks and the Catholicism, the Pope, all that kind of Vatican City, how oh, they go through the back door. That's why I'm always saying the back door. Because that back door is the dark door from the darkness. You have to go into light. They're not able to go there. They still know the powerful messages and some of those mysterious, as I'd say, um, mystic witchcraft powers that they use. There's symbols and numbers because that um, awakens and tells the demons, hey, look, I'm doing this symbol or I'm doing this using this tool through a matrix time to awaken the dead, the demons, the dead souls, the, 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 the nasty boiling flesh it's full of filth see then that you walk and i said that part let's see it's verse 17 therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of yahusha is but when they say lord they mean yahuwah yahuwah but lord i'm saying because you have to go through christ you have to cross over from darkness into light, you have to, you, you don't want to be mixed with dark and light. That's the yin and the yang and the zen and all that. No. So you don't want to do that. Saying that it brings peace. You don't want to be of dark. Because any dark will not get you into the kingdom. You won't inherit the kingdom. So what's the point of being even or level-headed or having both? Because what you're doing is you're abusing the power of the darkness. That means you're still dark. Your spiritual gifts are not they're stolen. They're not gifts of the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Throne. It says, um, And do not be drunk with wine in which it dis dis dissipated, but be filled with the Spirit. So when it says drunk, it means drunk in darkness. Wine. 
That means where people are drunk to the point of idolatry wine. So what they're doing is where they worship the harlot. That's what this is speaking of. Worshiping that beast and the harlot within a person. That's why when I see anyone talk about the beast comes out, I know they don't understand that part. They don't understand what that word really means, but... Beast in their way is saying like their determination, but it becomes divination. And that's where the witchcraft comes from. So you don't want to be a beast. You want to be full, full, filled with Holy Spirit, angelic spirit. You know what I'm saying? But I guess there's other words like fierce. Where is a, a fierceness? A drive, but that's also a spirit, a negative spirit, a wicked spirit. But people use the word fierce or um, strength, but it's it's in the context. So that it's in the context. That's why I say I can lovingly understand when a sister said beast. I can understand it. I wouldn't use that word necessarily, but I can understand it. See, I can understand it, but it doesn't mean the context is used accordingly to scripture. Um... Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. Poetry, scripture, peace, love, tranquility, serenity, encouragement, support. That's what that means. That's why you can be a poet like David was. You could be a psalmist like the palm tree and write and, and be poetic. Write books, articles, so forth. It says, um, hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, who wants to hear that come out of us? Giving thanks always for all things to Yahuwah, the Father, in the name of our Lord, Yahusha, who is Christ. It's Hamashiach, King of all kings. Verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of Yahuwah. Submitting our soul to bear witness to truth, testifying it. That's why it's not good to have a false, to give false witness. Excuse me. Um, oh yes, again, so when I do that last, that last video, it's, uh, my son and I running late today, but we're still working on the video. So what I'm trying to collaborate for it. So... Yes, it's been a, a struggle, and I apologize. So I, I really like to keep my word, but this here, the mark of the beast, I talk about the symbol of the 666 and the main man, beast, Genesis 3.22. I want to talk about that, okay? So, um, talking about Cain murdering Abel as well. So, um, that's how the tongue becomes very, um, it cuts like a knife. That's why it hurts when somebody abuses us emotionally with their words. It's abuse. And um, it needs to be asked to be forgiven at the mercy seat, but many don't want to take that step. So thank you for being here with me. I want to say shalom to you all. Today is um, Thursday. I think it's March 3rd. So um, 3rd or 4th. third March 3rd so I hope that's encouraging and also um, in some way um, receive revelation and the mystery of um, the tongue you know the mystery of it um can be used for good or or evil really um and I think I'll end there all right so everyone just wanted to talk about that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm entitled at the moment. I'll be uploading that later tonight, I think. So I'm just trying to make videos where I can just kind of speak about everything all in one. But the most I had placed Ephesians on my heart. You know, walking. Walking. So it's not running. It's not skipping it's walking as love walking as light 
walking in spirit and truth, walking in wisdom, discernment, walking as our armor just shines brighter and brighter as we're called to serve the way our purpose is and be abundant. But I will tell you as much as I've been through, storing up treasures in heaven 